In this video, we're going to talk about the EAS compressor. Now, a couple of sensors interact with the compressor and the EAS computer to determine when it's appropriate to run the compressor. The EAS computer has a pressure switch that it relies upon to uh, trigger the compressor, and it also has an overtemp, a temperature sensor that it relies upon to trigger the compressor. Now, if either of those two sensors are faulty, then the EAS computer will never actually will never actually trigger will never actually tr attempt to trigger or run this compressor. The compressor will just simply stay here, completely dormant the entire time. Now, um, this is a situation where the compressor is actually working properly. The compressor can be triggered manually. You can trigger the compressor using the uh, fuse block jumper method or the EAS unlock software will you can trigger the compressor and it runs properly but during normal operation what's happening is the compressor is just simply refusing to run and in this short video I'm going to show you how to test the over temp sensor to make sure it's functioning properly and the pressure sensor if either of those two sensors are faulty the EAS computer will see no reason to run the compressor and the compressor will just simply stay dormant under normal operation okay now we're going to test the EAS pressure switch. And the pressure switch, like I said, signals back to the EAS computer when the pressure in the air reservoir is above or below a certain level. Now the pressure switch is actually inside the EAS valve block in here. And in order to test it, we're going to have to pull this connector, uh, which is C141, I believe. And difficult to pull. Kind of have to get in there. And there we are. So uh, this lead actually goes back to the EAS computer. And for our test, we're going to be working with this connector. This is the C141 connector. And we're going to need to test pins 7 and 9. And we're going to take our multimeter, test pins 7 and 9. All right, again, this is the C141 connector. And starting at the upper left-hand corner is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next row, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're going to be testing pins 7 and 9 on the second row. Pin 7 and pin, oops, sorry, pin 7 and pin 9. Now, that is a completely open connection that I have. Remember, if I'm connected, I get a beep. But right now, pins 7 and 9 are open, which signals that the pressure is below 120 psi. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to manually run the compressor using the fuse box jumper method. I'm going to start the engine, manually run, it, run the compressor about 5-10 minutes and see if we can get the state of this pressure switch to change from open to closed. Okay, I've gone ahead and run the compressor manually for about 5-10 to 10 minutes or so. I did this using the fuse box jumper method. You need to be careful when you do this you know, go ahead and intermittently check the uh, temperature of the compressor to make sure it's not overheating. And now that I've let it run, we're going to check pin 7 and pins 9. And now that circuit is completely closed. It's a closed circuit now. No resistance at all. And the, the state has changed. The state has changed from open, independent resistance, to closed with no resistance that means that our pressure switch is working properly and signaling that we're over 140 psi. So and if it doesn't change state, then pressure switch is broken, or you haven't actually built up enough pressure switch pressure yet, or the possibility that your compressor isn't functioning at its optimum rate.